Just prove, I want to show you some little uh, tips and techniques. A lot of times when students first learn about proving triangles congruent or even working with geometry proofs in general, it's a little bit intimidating. So let me show you my process. The first thing that I do is I look at the givens, okay? And I think of the givens as clues or hints. The other thing that I like to do is I like to mark the diagram with what I can figure out from the givens. So let's go ahead and start there. We have AB is congruent to DC. So AB is congruent to DC. You can see that I'm marking that on the diagram. Now that might be a clue. I might be able to figure out something more from that. If I can, I wanna make it as a step in my two column proof. But this is pretty much, there's not much we can do with that. We can just say, okay, we know they're congruent. Let's mark the diagram. So we don't have to remember that. We can just visually see it on the diagram. The second given is that AB is parallel to DC. So they're saying that this line and this line are parallel. So I like to just draw a little arrow to show that those are two sides are parallel. The other thing I like to do when lines are parallel is I like to extend those lines a little bit like this. And then this is like a transversal. You can extend that a little bit further. So what should kind of jump out at you now is this diagram here that you learned about earlier in geometry, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Now that's a clue. What can we figure out from that? Well, we know that this angle and this angle are congruent by alternate interior angles. So these two angles are gonna be the same. And so we're gonna then put that as a step in our proof. So first things first though, let's go ahead and write the, uh, the givens down. Usually that's the first thing that students like to do just to get it out of the way. AB is congruent to DC and we also know that AB is parallel to DC and we're just gonna say given. Okay, now for step number two, we're gonna say that these two angles are congruent. So that's angle ABD, angle ABD is congruent to angle CDB. Now remember, when you write angles, you wanna make sure that you make that vertex the middle letter. The other mistake you don't wanna make is you don't wanna just call this angle B because somebody might think you're talking about this angle, this angle, the whole angle. Whenever it's ambiguous like that, you wanna use three points, making sure that that middle letter is the vertex or the hinge. So this was my alternate interior angles. I'm just gonna abbreviate. Step number three now is we really can't figure anything else out from the givens. We tried that, okay? So now I go to the diagram and I try to figure out, is there anything on the diagram that I can uh, show is congruent? Well, you can see that this side here, BD, is shared between these two triangles, okay? Because you can see they're right next to each other, they're sharing that side. It's gonna be the same length in both triangles. So we can say that BD, segment BD, is congruent to segment BD. And that is the reflexive property. It's just like looking in a mirror. You're the same height in the mirror as you are in real life. And again, I like to, when I figure things out, I like to mark it on the diagram so I don't have to remember that. I can just visually see. So now, we wanna prove the triangle's congruent. You can see that we have side, angle, side. The angle in between the two sides, they call that the included angle, is congruent. Over in this triangle, see side, angle, side. That angle is in between the two sides that we know are congruent to the, these two sides. So essentially what you can see is if we pick up this triangle, rotate it 180 degrees, the sides are gonna match up, the included angle is gonna match up, and we have the side angle side uh, congruence. So basically we know that the triangles are congruent by side angle side, and whatever you're trying to prove, this is always gonna be the last step in your proof. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle uh, CDB, and you've got it. If you wanna see more examples of working with two column proofs, I'll have a playlist right there you can check out for more help with this. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I look forward to helping you in the future videos and I'll talk to you soon.